It's not the celebration a president would want in an election year. Amid social unrest and a worsening pandemic, Trump delivered a speech full of the combativeness often reserved for his rallies. Ladies and gentlemen, the president. We are now in the process of defeating the radical left, the Marxists, the anarchists, the agitators, the looters, and people who, in many instances, have absolutely no clue what they are doing. The holiday comes during a time of national reckoning over the country's history and legacy of slavery. Criticised for his handling of the coronavirus, Trump's claims of progress is at stark odds with the country's surging infection rate. We got hit by the virus that came from China. And we've made a lot of progress. Our strategy is moving along well. It goes out in one area and rears back its ugly face in another area. But we've learned a lot. We've learned how to put out the flame. Now we have tested almost 40 million people. By so doing, we show cases, 99% of which are totally harmless. The risk was enough to discourage many, with only a sparse crowd watching on. The day brought different meaning to those who turned out. To me, it's a very important day, and it deserves to be celebrated. Today is a teaching day. To know that we can get to a day of independence, the more we have to come together, the more we actually have to unite. Different this year that there's no people, <laughs> but doesn't make a difference to me, so I'm still here. The event culminated in a huge fireworks display. Fireworks also between opposing protesters. The polarization of America on a day intended to unite. For more on this very unusual 4th of July, let's cross over now to Enos Paul, DW's Washington Bureau Chief. Enos, good to have you with us. We've heard a rather upbeat assessment of the situation in the U.S. from the president. Do his claims match the facts? Yeah, that's really kind of strange to hear him talking about the virus and the pandemic and then just see the pure figures. I mean, you just mentioned it. We had 126,000 dead Americans already and the figures of the people who are infected are exploding. The healthcare system is down. The economy is down. And then he says everything is fine. It is really, it is really strange, especially when you are out here reporting and, and seeing what the pandemic does also to this celebration of the 4th of July. It's so empty here compared to other years and the mood isn't as happy as Donald Trump obviously would wish for. Nonetheless, the White House has been telling Americans for months now that the coronavirus is going to somehow disappear with new infections increasing dramatically day after day as you just said. Is that message starting to shift? I think so. I think it's really the figures, the pure figures, uh, which forces them into a different rhetoric. We hear that they slightly stop saying the virus will just disappear miraculously. They say we have to live with the virus. Uh, and that is probably true. I mean, that's what everybody says. That's also what the German Chancellor Angela Merkel said. Uh, the world has to find a way to live with the virus. And that seems to be the new message from the White House as well. You've been out in the streets of Washington all day, and it looks like a very different 4th of July uh, than what you normally see. Uh, tell us more. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, this 4th of July comes in a, in a moment where, uh, when this country or in which this country is really split. I mean, it's divided as it uh, has never been before. Um, and instead of uh, Donald Trump using this moment and this speech he delivered last night, he delivered uh, today, he is delivering, using this possibility, this opportunity to really bring this uh, country together, he does quite the opposite. He stirs fear. He kind of puts out a cultural war on his own people. Uh, that's the opposite I think a, a political leader should do right now. A worrying scenario there in the U.S. Enos Paul in Washington, thank you very much.